Nova Gnome Creations. I'm Nova, and today we're going to be making this adorable amigurumi caterpillar. This is going to be super simple and beginner friendly. I'm going to walk you through every step, and it's pretty much no sewing at all. Um, actually, I would consider it a no sew pattern. So we're going to connect the caterpillar all just using a, a continuous piece of yarn and you're not going to have to sew it together. So this should help keep it pretty simple and keep it from overwhelming newbies to amigurumi. I hope that you find this helpful and that you end up with a beautiful caterpillar by the end of it. So to give you a couple of options about what we're going to be doing today, these two caterpillars are both made in a number four size yarn, a worsted weight yarn, and done with a 3.75 millimeter hook. Now, if you would like to make your caterpillar a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, this is super easily adjusted by changing your yarn size, your hook size, or the amount of stitches that we do. So I'm just gonna quickly go through that so that you can make the perfect sized caterpillar for what you want. This caterpillar for reference is going to be about palm sized. Here is it being held in my hand to give you an idea of how big it is. So the size that I made for these amigurumi uh, caterpillars is this ball right here. And this is with a number four worsted weight yarn and a 3.75 millimeter hook. If you would like to make a smaller caterpillar, say with a size of ball about that big, it's super simple. When I jump into the tutorial here in a minute, I'm going to start with a magic circle and six single crochets in the circle. Now don't worry if you don't know how to do a magic circle, I'm going to show you. If you want to make a smaller caterpillar, just do four single crochets into the magic circle instead of six. Everything else will be the same. When I increase around, you'll increase around. When I single crochet around, you'll single crochet around. I'll still walk you through the whole process and everything's going to be the same. Your stitch count will just be a little bit different. So this is starting with six single crochets and this is starting with four. They're both done with a 3.75 millimeter hook and a four weight yarn. Your third option is to use a three weight yarn. So this is about the size that your ball will be if you use a three weight yarn and still using the 3.75 millimeter hook. So this gives you three different sizes that you can do for your caterpillar and you could do even a mix and match caterpillar uh, if you wanted it to get steadily smaller as you went or something like that, you have the option to do that. So this is exactly the same as this. You're just switching to a size three yarn. I hope this helps and I hope that you can customize your caterpillar to suit your exact tastes. All right, let's get into it. So to make your caterpillar, you're going to just need a couple of things. Uh, the yarn of your choice uh, in probably two or more colors so that you can make your caterpillar uh, alternate colors as it goes down. Uh, either yarn scraps or stuffing. It won't take very much. It's a good way to use up those little tiny pieces of yarn or just use a little bit of fluffing or stuffing. <laughs> um, a hook of your choice also. I'm using a 3.75 for a four weight yarn and a darning needle. I like these curved ones. Not so much of an issue for a project that's smaller like this, but <clears throat> even with a project that's smaller like this, it's easier to get your needle in and out of a stuffed object that's not just going to be flat and, you know, easy in, easy out. You'll also need a pair of safety eyes optionally a stitch marker and scissors. So to begin this project we're going to start by making a magic circle or also known as a magic ring. I'll show you how to do this um, and if you need any further assistance or a slower way of doing it there are plenty of tutorials on YouTube about how to make a magic circle um, or I could even make one if it's uh, something that people need but I'm going to just show you here um, kind of quickly but in case you've never made one before. So you're going to start out by laying your yarn into your hand like this and you're going to be working with these two fingers. So what you're going to do is with your thumb hold this yarn right here and you're going to want your hook. You're going to wrap the yarn around these two fingers and you're going to do it so that it makes an X like this. 
crisscrossed. And you can make it more defined if it helps you. Um, it doesn't really matter, but this is what you want to do with the yarn. So I'm gonna show you one more time. Lay the yarn across your hand, using your thumb to hold it. Wrap the yarn around, and you're going to be making it into an X. Then you're going to slide your hook under this first loop of yarn and grab the second and pull it. Then you're going to turn your hook like that so that there is a loop on your hook. Then you're going to grab the working yarn. One more time from this step where it's already in an X, you slide under the first loop, grab the second loop, pull through and turn, and then grab this yarn. After you grab this yarn, you're going to pull it through this loop that you have on your hook and this is your magic circle. What I like to do at this point is just grab this little tail and pull it out of my circle. Not necessary, but I like to do that. But this is your magic circle. So if you need to, you can rewind and uh, watch that step a few times, but hopefully that helps you with your magic circle. So the first step that we're going to do to form the ball for the caterpillar, which is made up of several balls, um, and I can actually show you here. So it's made up of four balls, and you're, if you're using two colors, then you'll want to do two of each, and decide which one will be the head so that you know which one to put the safety eyes in, uh, what color I mean to be the head, so that you know which one to put the safety eyes in when you're working on it. First, we'll start with just a ball to keep it simple, um, and you can learn the ball first. So we're gonna do six single crochets in our magic circle, and the way that you do that is holding this tail and the loop, the uh, circle part together, you go ahead and yarn under, put your uh, yarn over it, and you just make a normal single crochet. Just like that, and you just work over both of these pieces of yarn at the same time. So just a normal single crochet, but worked over both of those, and you're just going to work around your magic circle and we're doing six single crochets. So we've got three, four, five, and six. Now, at this point, the way that you close your magic circle is this little tail that you've left, you actually pull on it. And it just nicely and magically pulls your circle shut. Now, I recommend not closing it too tightly. There's a little bit of a, a hole in the middle, you'll see, because as you close it, your stitches over here will get really tight and it can be difficult to get into them if you pull it all the way shut right now. So for now, I recommend just leaving it at about there. So the next step is to increase around, which is going to be six in increases. An increase stitch, um, and then, sorry, to make sure that you know where your first stitch is, it is right here. If you need help finding it, you can always count back to it. So you can go one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you'll know that this right here is your first single crochet over here. And if you do have trouble getting into it, you can always kind of loosen your magic circle up a bit. but. Um, an increase is two single crochets into the same stitch. So we do our first single crochet and we do our second single crochet into that same stitch. Now with it being this small, I don't necessarily use a stitch marker at this point, but um, it, you can keep count as you go around or if you're more comfortable, you can definitely put a stitch marker in here. And we're just going to continue around doing increases and there will be six increases, totaling for a total of 12 stitches at the end of the round. So there's our second increase. Our third increase. Four. Five. 
five, and six. So the way that I use my um, stitch marker is I like to put it in the first stitch of the round. You can put it wherever you're used to putting it and you're most comfortable putting it. So for me, I know when I get back to this first uh, stitch, it'll have the stitch marker in it. And I know that this is the last stitch of the round. So at this point, you can go ahead and close your magic circle the rest of the way if you want. Um, right now you see it has a little hole in it. And the, and the way you do that is you just pull on your tail Try not to cover it while I do it so you can see it how it works. And now it has no hole in it. So um, your magic tail or your magic tail, <laughs> your tail comes out this side, so you'll pull this way. Um, and that's just gonna close it right up for you. Super easy. So the next step is going to be uh, single crochets and increases alternating around. Um, so we're doing six batches of sing single crochet increase, um, and that will end with a total of 18 stitches. So there's our sing single crochet, and we can go ahead and toss a stitch marker in here if you want. And then we do our increase. And there's our increase. So we just alternate single crochet, increase. And you're gonna alternate that six times for a total at the end of the round of 18 stitches. If you want to make this a smaller project and you want to still use a worsted weight yarn, then you can decrease the stitch count. So if you would like to do that, um, instead at the beginning uh, of doing six single crochets into your magic circle, you'll do four. And everything else will be the same as far as um, closing your magic circle, doing your increase row, doing your single crochet increases. Uh, you're just going to have less stitches as you go around. So you can just start with four stitches in your magic circle and um, everything else that I tell you will be the same. The only thing that'll be different is your stitch count. So here is our single crochet increase round done. That is our third row. Now moving on to the fourth and actually also the fifth and sixth, we're just gonna single crochet around. So single crochet into that first stitch and go ahead and toss your stitch marker into there. You can also use a piece of yarn as a stitch marker if you don't have stitch markers. You just lay the piece of yarn over the stitch that you're going to make and then you make the stitch right over the piece of yarn and it'll kind of secure it down into there. So we're just going to continue around and make single crochets and we're going to repeat this for three rows. At this point, it's okay to um, let it just cup up like this. Um, and then after our single crochet row, we will flip it inside out or right side out as it were, because this is actually the part that you want as the outside of your ball. And then this is the part you'll want as the inside. I don't know if you can see the difference between those stitches. Um, of course, you can do it however you prefer. If you like the way that this side looks, you can always just weave in your tail. Um, and you know have it be on the inside but this is typically the side that is considered the outside so for now it's fine to just let it cup up or if you prefer you can go ahead and flip it um, so that that parts on the outside the reason that it's okay to let it cup up right now is because we're just single crocheting um, and adding uh, in the last round some increases that's fine to do uh, with it like this there's the end of the first round. 
go ahead and start our second. Um, when you need to flip it is um, if you start doing decreases because we do an invisible decrease and you want to make sure that you have it facing the right way when you do that, which I will be showing you when we are done with our single crochet rounds. All right, we're coming to the end of round two. We're gonna go ahead and move our stitch marker and start round three. The stitch marker is nice here because you don't have to think very much about what you're doing. You can kind of just go with the flow. Um, and then if you feel um, like you need to count your stitches when you're done with the row, um, you can easily do that and you know where the start and end of your row is. So it's easy to keep count of your stitches without having to necessarily count um, every row as you're going. Especially when you're increasing and decreasing and things like that. It's nice to know, oh, I just repeat, you know, single crochet increase alternating around without having to try to keep count of how many stitches uh, you've done. And then you can always count it at the end and you have a nice defined start to your row because you have a stitch marker in it. And these are the last two stitches. And that is the end of our three rounds of single crochet. Um, because this time I am just showing you how to make a ball um, I won't stop and do safety eyes, but if this was going to be the head, I would do the safety eyes now. So I will show you how to do that. Go ahead and flip it right side out. And you can just shove this tail inside because it's going to be hidden. Um, if you prefer for some extra security, you can weave this tail um, in and out a little bit. Um, I find that my my magic rings don't come out, so I don't need to worry about it, but that's totally up to you if you prefer that. So now you've got the start of your ball coming along, and you've got the part you want on the outside on the outside. We're going to go ahead and remove our stitch marker, and this is going to be row 7. For this row, we're going to do single crochet, decrease, repeat. And we're going to repeat that six times of single crochet and decrease. So we start out by doing a single crochet and tossing our stitch marker into there. Now I do an invisible decrease when I'm doing amigurumi. And the way that you do that is you only take your front loops. Your front loops are these loops that are closest to you. Make sure that I'm focused here. Okay, so you see that there's a loop here and a loop here, and you normally go through both of these loops for a single crochet. This loop that's closest to you is called the front loop, and this loop that is furthest from you is called the back loop. So to do an invisible decrease, you only go in the front loop, and you go in the front loop of the next stitch as well. And then you have both of those on your hook, and you yarn over and you pull through both. Then you just finish this like a normal single crochet with yarning over and pulling through both loops. And that's going to give you a um, nice decrease that when you're done at the end, you won't really see um, like a knot like you might see for a regular decrease. If you are having trouble with this or, and you don't prefer to do it this way, you can just do a normal decrease, which is just a uh, single crocheting the two loops together without just using the front loop. So you're welcome to do that, but I find that that um, decrease, which I will show you how to do again, 
front loop, front loop, yarn over, pull through both, yarn over, pull through both. I find that this is going to give you a much nicer uh, look at the end. If you look back here, you can already barely tell where we did that decrease. All right, so we're just going to continue around with single crochet and decrease stitches until we get back to the beginning. And at the end of this round, we will have 12 stitches. All right, we're at the last two stitches of the round. So I just did my single crochet and then now I'm doing one last decrease for the round. Okay, so at this point we have most of our ball formed and we've got a still good sized opening to go ahead and stuff. So at this point you can go ahead and grab your polyfill or your yarn scraps and stuff them nicely and tightly in here. Okay, so it won't take much stuffing. Um, I've got my stuffing here, and what I'm gonna do to make it a little bit easier is I'm gonna remove my hook. Before doing that, I'm just gonna pull a little bit extra yarn through and make that loop nice and big, just so I don't have to worry about it coming out. And we can go ahead and take our stitch marker out for this row if you'd like to, or for this uh, step. So I have a small piece of stuffing right here and I'm going to go ahead and put that in. And you can just stuff with your finger or you can use the little stick that comes in the stuffing. Or if you're using yarn scraps, you can stuff it with your yarn scraps. Um, and you can do this to however tight you like your stuffing to be. I usually stuff my amigurumi pretty tightly, but it's totally up to you how squishy and or how um, you know, well stuffed you'd like it to be. So when you're happy with the amount of stuffing that you have in here, or yarn scraps, whatever you're using, um, you can go ahead and move on to the next step. So I think that's good for mine, and it's nice and ball shaped. So I'm gonna go ahead and come back around, put my yarn hook back in, and close up that loop a little bit. Now for the last step of our ball, we're going to do a row of decreases and it's going to be a total of six decreases. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that first decrease. And then I'm going to put my stitch marker in that first decrease just to keep track of when I'm done doing decreases. And this part can be a little bit of a tricky part. Whenever you get to the end of a project and you're closing it up, you have to deal with the fact that you now have polyfill that's kind of sticking out. You know, just do your best to not grab it and pull it through. Um, if you do though, it's no big deal. You can pull it out or you can even grab some tweezers at the end and pull out any that are sticking out if it bothers you. It's really not a big deal, but if you don't like them on there, then it's pretty simple to get them. And it's gonna show more with darker yarns too. You'll see it more, but that's just part of the process. We're gonna go ahead and do another decrease. And if you didn't stuff fully, if you wanted to leave a little bit of space to um, do your decreases, as you start getting closer to that stitch marker, you can go ahead and stick a little bit more stuffing in there. That's more something I would probably do for a larger project than this, but um, that's totally an option if you don't feel comfortable having the stuffing so close to your stitches as you finish the round.
All right, and now we are to our last decrease. So we're going to do that. And then we can go ahead and take our stitch marker off. And you can go ahead and cut your yarn. You don't need a very long tail for this, so you can just leave a little bit of a tail. Um, and if you prefer a longer tail, you can definitely leave a longer tail for sewing in. Um, but now we are going to sew in our tail. So you can go ahead and pull this out. You want to pull that loop out as you're pulling your, your uh, hook out so that it secures off. You don't want to leave, um, you know, your single cro or your decrease loop on there because then it could uh, unravel. So now we're just going to thread the darning needle with our yarn. And just kind of fold it like this and hold it so that it doesn't come off and the way that we close this up is actually pretty fun we're gonna go in the front loop only of all six stitches so one two three four five and six now what's kind of cool is you see we've got this little hole and we've got our six stitches that we pulled through and now you just pull on this and boom they are all closed up so now um, you can just weave your tail in a few times this will help keep everything um, nice and secure and also hide your tail at the same time. You can just kind of do this however you feel like doing it. There's no method to the madness. Just kind of stick it in and pull it out in different areas. You can do this as many times as you want to. And then when you feel satisfied, you can go ahead and cut your tail off. Or you can just shove it back inside and leave it in the ball. <laughs> okay, and if you just kind of squeeze around a little bit, that little piece of tail that you cut will go inside and now you don't see where you cut off. So this is how you make the balls for the caterpillar and you're going to make four of these. Um, I'm going to come back on my next ball and show you where you attach your safety eyes. So it's going to be um, when you do those rows uh, four through six of single crochets. Uh, meet me back there on your next ball and I will show you where to put your safety eyes. So go ahead and use the color that you would like to use for your head. Now that you've finished rows four through six of your single crochets, we can go ahead and pull up a little bit on this loop and take out our crochet hook. If you haven't already, go ahead and flip right side out at this point. And then what we're going to do is we're going to select a safety eye size. You can do any size that you prefer. So looking at the size of your ball, which is going to be your head, this is pretty much the finished size that it's going to be. So you can go ahead and decide from there what, what kind of safety eyes you would like to do. So let's say that I want to do these blue safety eyes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in between rounds four and five. So since we did four through six, we know that this is going to be our sixth row and that this would be five and this would be four. So go ahead and just pick a spot between those two rows and insert your first safety eye. 
At this point, you'll be able to kind of see the size that you're working with and decide if that's the size that you want. If not, you can easily switch to a different size at this point. And then we're gonna separate them by about four stitches. So I see that there's a stitch right there. So one, two, three, four. And I'm just gonna put it between the same two rows that I put the other one between. And it's gonna look like that. You can put them however far apart you like them to be. That's just um, a good rule of thumb for this pattern, what I'm doing. So once you have your safety eyes on, you're just gonna go into the inside and apply the backs. So pick the back that corresponds to the size of eye that you're using. You'll know if it's the right size because it'll either, whoops, it'll either slide on uh, too easily and not lock into place or uh, you won't be able to get it on. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this tail out for now while I'm doing this. But you go ahead and slide it on and then you're just going to push down on it. And it, you heard that, I don't know if you heard that click, but it clicked and then push it again. And it can possibly go down another level depending on how thick your yarn is. And then we're just gonna do the same thing with the other one. And now that those are secured onto there, we are done applying our safety eyes. And they look like this. I think those were a really cute choice, um, but you can use any size you want. If you want to do smaller eyes, then you can do smaller eyes. Um, these were the ones that I did for this one. So I think probably about the same size, maybe a little bit smaller, um, but totally up to you and what you want yours to look like. So now I'm just going to continue working on the head and finish that off and make two more balls in whatever color I want so that in the end we will have a total of four and then we can meet back up and go ahead and assemble our caterpillar. So I'll see you back here when you have your completed four balls. Okay and once you have your four balls and you have one made for your head and three made for your body, we are going to go ahead and connect them. So the way that I'm doing the connecting with this, I wanted to keep it really simple and not have to do sewing because sewing can be really intimidating for a beginner and I wanted this to be a beginner friendly uh, tutorial. So we're just going to be attaching, you can see here kind of if I turn this, um, we're gonna be anchoring down in the head and running it through and it creates this nice and flexible um, body, but it's nice and securely attached. So that's what we're gonna do. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do is get the yarn of your choice and put it on your darning needle. You don't need a whole lot. Um, probably a few inches longer than uh, the length of your body, maybe a little extra just for good measure. Um, the way that I picked which color out of my two colors to use is I picked the color that is going to be the last ball because um, when we get to the end we're going to tie a knot and so you won't really see the knot anyways but just to be on the safe side I like it to be the color of the last ball that way if the knot did show up um, it won't show up because it's the same color. So we're going to take our head and we're going to find the center of it and work our, or go back so that we know we're in the middle. And then once we find our middle, we are going to take our yarn and we're going to weave it in across a couple stitches. So we want to check and make sure that's centered. I'm going to go over a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, that looks about centered. And we want it to be across one, maybe two stitches. I think I'm gonna do one. So you just pull it till about you here, till you have about a couple inches of um, extra, and you're just going to tie a couple of knots. So super, super simple. 
And this is just to anchor it in um, before you run it through the rest. And you're not going to see this because it's going to be hidden behind the next ball in the body. So give it however many knots that makes you feel comfortable with it. I'm going to do three. And then you're going to go ahead and just tuck this little tail into the head if you'd like. Um, I'm going to use this other darning needle that I have because it has some texture to the end of it and it catches the yarn really well. Um, you can also use the um, little stick that comes with your uh, stuffing to do this or you could use your needle, you could use whatever you want. Um, and alternatively you could just cut the string but I prefer to do this and I just tucked it into the same hole that I um, used to loop my yarn through. Oops. Now, still keeping my uh, darning needle attached, I'm going to go ahead and switch to my second color. Now, this is personal preference. You can choose to do this however you like, but for mine, the first ball I did with the stitches facing up, like this was the top or the bottom of the um, ball that I made and so it the stitches run in this horizontal way and then for the other ones I actually turned it sideways so that the top and the bottom are in between the other balls and then the stitches actually run vertical and it just makes it look a little bit different but you can do it however you like if you want them to all face the same way that is totally up to you and you can do that so I'm going to do the same thing this time. I have these right now both facing the same way. I'm going to flip that just for a little bit of uh, something a little bit different. Then I also like to do it this way because you have a very easily discernible center with the top of the stitches where you started your magic circle. So it makes it really easy because you can just go through the center of that and go straight through and pull out the back. Just like that. And then I pull through and I pull it all the way up till we get to this ball. And then I switch to my other color and I'm gonna do the same thing. I see that my center is right there. I'm gonna go through that and I'm gonna pull it out of the center of the other end. And then I'm going to pull it all the way to the next uh, ball and grab my last color. And repeat. Go ahead and stick through the center. And then pull out through the center on the other end. And now you've got them all threaded on here. Now for this part, I, before I knot this, I kind of give this a good tug and push them all down a little bit um, just to make sure that there won't be any extra string um, and that is just something that I want to do with mine so you can do that if you like and then what I'm gonna do is um, while holding this down kind of pushing on it you know to keep them sort of smooshed together I'm going to take my uh, darning needle and I'm going to start to weave in and out of the end. So you can do this or you can just tie a knot and tuck in the ends like we did on the uh, anchoring part when we did the head, uh, when we started our little string that would go through. So that is up to you. If you're using the same color, then you can do it this way and this is even easier. And just going to go back and forth a good amount of times to give it security and this will also keep it from puckering if you uh, pull to you know you pull tight and then you um, do a knot you might have a little bit of puckering right here so this will keep it from doing that and then once you've got enough weaving in and out and you feel comfortable with it you can go ahead and pull it tight and 
cut your yarn and the same as before um, to hide that little spot where the yarn is sticking through right there you can just kind of massage this around and it'll just go right in and you won't be able to see it and then you can give your uh, caterpillar a little squeeze massage these around a little bit to get them back to their round shape since uh, we squished them together but look how perfect that looks and you don't see any of the connecting string, string since you uh, squished it together when you were um, anchoring it. Make sure that's focused for you. So there we have our caterpillar body all connected. Okay, so and for our last step, we're going to create some antennas for our caterpillar. And they're going to look like this. So to do that, go ahead and grab the color that you would like to do your antennas in. It could be any color. Um, I chose to do gray for this one, but for the one I'm working on right now, I'm going to use black. So go ahead and grab that yarn. And what we're going to do is before we um, do our slip knot, we're actually going to leave a um, decent sized tail. So let's say five or six inches. And then go ahead and make your slip knot. And then once you have your slip knot on uh, your hook, you can go ahead and pull that. You can make your antennas as long or as short as you want. I'm going to do, let's say a chain of five. So one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to do one extra chain beyond what I want my length to be. This is called a turn chain, and it just means it's a chain that you're not going to stitch into when you turn. And then we're just going to turn, and in that second chain from our hook, we're going to do a slip stitch. And that's it. So you can go ahead and cut your working yarn. And then you can pull the loop through off of your hook so that the yarn comes out. Give that a little tug. And it'll look a little something like this. Oops. Make sure that's focused for you. And now you're going to take this tail that you just made up at the top and you're going to put it onto your darning needle and we're going to weave this in and out of our chain that we made to get it down to the base of the chain down to the beginning so you're just going to take your yarn and your needle and kind of weave it in and out of the stitches working your way down until you get back to the base. So it's going to look something like this on your hook or on your uh, needle and then you just pull through all of it and pull that yarn out the other end. And give that a little bit of a tug not too much of a tug or it will uh, cause it to kind of wrinkle up but now you have your antenna. So how we're going to attach the antenna, you'll see now that you have two tails and that makes it very easy to tie on. So you're going to take your darning needle again and you're gonna put it on one side of your um, antenna on one of the tails. So. If you look at your antenna, you'll see that there's kind of a front and a back, in my in my opinion. <laughs> um, this would actually just be the back when you were working it, and when you did your turn chain, this was like the natural front. For me, I think that looks a little nicer as the front because it kind of curves a little bit at the tip, but you can do it whatever direction you think looks best, and then um, attach it with that side facing the front. So. You can place your antennas on the head and kind of see where you want them. So like I think right here looks good. 
make sure my camera is focusing. There we go. Uh, I think about right there looks good for mine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in one side of the stitches and up the other side so that I have one stitch over my needle and then I'm going to pull through and then I can actually remove my darning needle and I can just tie this. So I give it a little bit of a uh, tug so that it's not um, completely pulled through. There's a little bit of slack on that string right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and tie a knot. Now when you're tying your knot, you'll notice that the antenna can kind of scrunch. So this actually works to your advantage because it, it looks nice kind of scrunched. So you can pull this as tight as you want and have this scrunch as much as you want. And then you can stop and tie your second knot. So when you're happy with the amount of scrunching that you have on there, go ahead and tie your second knot and that'll keep it from scrunching any further when you're pulling on it. Okay. And then you can just tuck these down into the head. You can trim them a little bit since you don't need to tuck all of that down in there and it'll be a little bit easier to tuck it in. Um, or if you prefer, you can uh, weave them in, you can uh, trim them, however you like to do yours, but I'm going to tuck mine in. So I look at where the little um, base is for that and go ahead and grab my yarn tail and I'm going to push it over there. And I'm just going to start to push it into the head. And don't worry if you're kind of squishing your head here. You can um, very easily put that back into shape. So don't worry about that. And then once you have that one in, you can go ahead and tuck the other one in. And like I said, you can use anything you want to do this. You can use your needle, you could use your hook, you could use the little stick that comes with your stuffing if you're using polyfill. And then you have your antenna. So you can go ahead and repeat that for the second side and the second antenna, and then you will be done. So I'll meet you back here once I have my second antenna attached. Okay, and my antennas are both attached. So that was the last step for making our caterpillar. And this is what it looks like. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and that you found it helpful. And I hope that you have an adorable caterpillar. I would love to see your guys' caterpillars. If you uh, make a YouTube video and you want to tag me or you want to tag me on Instagram, uh, feel free. I would love to see what you come up with. And I hope everyone has a great day. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment below if you found this helpful. Have a great day, guys. Bye.